learners, welcome you all to e-learning platform. Now we are in week 5. This is Faisal Ahmed with you throughout this lecture. In this week you will learn a short biography of E.M. Forster, Edmund Morgan Forster. And then an introduction to A Passage to India. You will also learn text summary and paraphrase of part one mosque of A Passage to India. Let's begin. Biography of E. M. Forster. E. M. Forster is an English novelist, short story writer, essayist, and libertist. Birth and early life. He was born in London on January 1, 1879. Ian Forster was one, was an only child. His father, an architect, died when Forster was only a year old. The boy was raised by his mother, grandmother, and his father's aunt, who left Forster the sum of eight thousand pounds in her will. His novels, many of his novels, examine class difference and hypocrisy, including a room with a view. Written in 1908, Herbert's Inn in 1910, and A Passage to India, published in 1924. The last brought him his greatest success, I mean A Passage to India. He was nominated for the Nobel Prize in Literature in 16 different years. His death, Forster died of a stroke on June 7, 1970 in Coventry, England. Today, his literary reputation remains high, and all of his novels, except The Longest Journey, have been adapted into films. Background of his writing a Passage to India In 1906, while living with his mother in the town of Weybridge, near London, first tutored an Indian student named Said Ros Masood. The two developed a close friendship and Forster became curious about India. In 1912, Forster visited India for the first time with some friends from Cambridge University and spent some time with Masood there. He stayed in India for six months and saw the town of Bankipur located on the Ganges River in Northeast India. Benkipur became the model for Chandrapur in the novel. Forster also saw the nearby Bar Barabar Caves, which gave him the idea for the Marabar Caves in his novel A Passage to India. While in India he wrote first drafts of seven chapters of a new novel that would become A Passage to India. During the First World War, Forster worked as a Red Cross volunteer in Alexandria, Egypt. In 1921, he made a second visit to India, where he spent six months as private secretary to the Maharaja of Devas, senior, an independent Muslim state. He gathered more material about India, and after returning to England, he finished writing A Passage to India, which he dedicated to Masud. Forster found the writing process difficult and feared that the book would be a failure. He was, re he was relieved by the book's favorite reception, and in the remaining 45 years of his life he received many awards and honors due to his novel A Passage to India. Although he continued to write short stories, essays, and ra radio programs, he turned away from the novel form. A Passage to India and Introduction A Passage to India, published in 1924, was Ian Forster's first novel in 14 years and the last novel he wrote. Subtle and rich in symbolism, the novel works on several levels. On the surface, it is about India, which at the time was a colonial possession of Britain, 
and about the relations between British and Indian people in that country. It is also about the necessity of friendship and about the difficulty of establishing friendship across cultural boundaries. In the novel you will find the cultural barriers between Indian and British. On a more symbolic level, the novel also addresses questions of faith, both religious faith and faith in social conventions. Forster's narrative centers on Dr. Aziz, a young Indian physician and also a Muslim in religion whose attempt to establish friendships with several British characters has disastrous consequences in the novel. In the course of the novel, Dr. Aziz is accused of attempting to rape a young English woman. Aziz's friend, Mr. Fielding, a British teacher, helps to defend Aziz, although the charges against Aziz are dropped during his trial. The gulf between the British and native Indians grows wider than ever. And the novel ends on an ambiguous note. Criticism. When a passage to India appeared in 1924, it was praised by reviewers in a number of important British and American literary journals. Despite some criticism that Forster had depicted the British unfairly, the book was popular with readers in both Britain and the United States. The year after its publication, the novel received two prestigious literary awards, the James Tate Black Memorial Prize and the Prix Femina by Harry Hughes. More than 70 years later it remains high regarded. Not only do many scholars, critics and other writers consider it a classic of early 20th century fiction, but in a survey of readers conducted by Waterstones Bookstore and Channel 4 Television in Britain at the end of 1996, it was voted as one of the 100 greatest books of the century. Introduction to Characters and Settings and Text Summary The characters who were appeared in the novel are Dr. Aziz, the major character of the protagonist, Cyril Fielding, the British friend of Dr. Aziz, Miss Adela Quester, the British woman and the heroine of this novel, Mrs. Moore, an elderly woman from Britain visited India, and also made a good friendship with Dr. Aziz. Rani Islav, the magistrate in Chandrapur in India, while India was under the British rule regime. Professor Marian Gadbol, a professor who is a very religious person in terms of Hinduism. Mr. Tarton and Mrs. Tarton, British visitors. Mather Calendar, the other official in India and the British show. Mr. McBride, Miss Derek, Nawab Bahadur, Indian Raja. Hamidullah, another friend of Dr. Aziz. Amrit Rao. Mahmoud Ali, Dr. Pandalal, Ralph Moore, Stella Moore, these are minor characters in the novel. Settings of the novel. The action of the first two sections of the book takes place in the town of Chandrapur and at the Maravar Caves, located outside the town. Within the town itself, which is fairly nondescript. Forster identifies several localized settings. When we see the Anglo-Indian officials such as Major Calendar and Mr. Tatum and their wives, it is almost in invariably at the civil station, the area where the Anglo-Indians live and work. Often they are at the Chandrapur club, which is exclusively for the Anglo-Indians and their British guests such as Mrs. Moore and which Indians cannot enter. Although this setting emphasizes the Anglo-Indian superior social status, it also shows their isolation from the mass of Indians who live around them. By contrast, the Indians are often shown at their own homes or in public places. The third section is set in Mao, a Hindu state several hundred miles from Chandrapur. 
The book's three section headings, mosque, caves, and the temple indicate the symbolic settings. Text summary continues. E.M. Forster's A Passage to India concerns the relations between the English and the native population of India during the colonial period in which Britain ruled India. The novel takes place primarily in Chandrapur, a city along the Ganges River notable only for the nearby Marabar caves. The main character of the novel is Dr. Aziz, a Muslim doctor in Chandrapur and widower. After he is summoned to the civil surgeon's home only to be promptly ignored. Aziz visits a local Islamic temple where he meets Mrs. Moore, an elderly British woman visiting her son. Mr. Hislav, who is a city magistrate, although Aziz rep rep reprimands her for not taking her shoes off in the temple before reality, I mean, criticize her, reprimands, criticize her for not taking her shoes off in the temple, I mean, the mosque, before realizing. She has, in fact, observed this rule. The two soon find that they have much in common and he escorts her back to the club. Back at the club, Mrs. Moore meets her companion, Adela Quister, who will likely marry her son, Mr. Ronnie Hislop. Adela complains that they have seen nothing of India, but rather English customs replicated abroad. Although a few persons make racist statements about Indians, Mr. Tartan, the collector, proposes having a bridge party to bridge the gulf between, I mean the gap, gulf is figuratively used here, between east and the west. When Mrs. Moore tells her son Ronnie about Aziz, he reprimands her for associating with an Indian. While Mr. Tartan issues the invitations to the bridge party. The invitees suspect that this is a political move, for the character would not behave so cordially without a motive, but accept the invitation despite the suspicion. Summary continues. For Adele and Mrs. Moore, the bridge party is a failure for only a select few of the English guests behave well toward the Indians. Among these is Mr. Fielding, the schoolmaster at the government college, who suggests that Adela meet Aziz. Mrs. Moore scolds her son for being implied to the Indians, but Ronnie Hislop feels that he is not in India to be kind, for there are more important things to do. This often this offends her sense of Christian charity. I mean, Mr. Ronnie's love is very strict and very biased in terms of culture and racist, in, in fact, what I mean. Aziz accepts Fielding's invitation to tea with Adela, Mrs. Moore, and Professor Narayan Gadbol. During tea, they discuss the Marabar case. While Fielding takes Mrs. Moore to see the college, Ronnie arrives to find Adela alone with Aziz and Gadbol. And later, chastises Fielding for leaving an English woman alone with two Indians. I mean, she charged her with a rape case. However, he reminds Ronnie that Adela is capable of making her own decisions. Aziz plans a picnic at the Marabar Caves for Miss Quested and Mrs. Moore. Adela tells Ronnie that she will not marry him. But he nevertheless suggests that they take a car trip to see Chandrapur. The Nawab Bahadur, an important local figure, agrees to take them. During the trip, the car serves into a free and miss Derek, an English woman passing by at the time, agrees to take them back to town. However, she snaps the Nawab Bahadur and his chauffeur. Adela speaks to Ronnie and tells him that she was foolish to say that they should not be married. Both Aziz and Gadbol 
fall sick after the party at Mr. Fielding's home. So Fielding visits Aziz and they discuss the state of politics in India. Aziz shows Fielding a picture of his wife, a significant event considering his Islamic background and an important demonstration of their friendship. Aziz plans the expedition to the Marabar Caves, considering even minute detail because he does not wish to offend the English ladies. During the day when they are to embark, Muhammad Latif, a friend of Aziz, bribes Adela's servant, Antony, not to go on the expedition for the Saabs as a spy for Rani Islam, for his Saabs as a spy for Rani Islam. Although Aziz Adela and Mrs. Moore arrive to the train station on time, Fielding and Gadbol miss the train because of Gadbol's morning prayers. Adela and Aziz discuss her marriage and she fears she will become a narrow-minded Anglo-Indian such as the other wives of British officials. When they reach the caves, a distinct echo in one of them frightens Mrs. Moore, who decides she must leave immediately. The echo terrifies her, for it gives her the sense that the universe is chaotic and has no order. Aziz and Adela continue to explore the caves, and Adela realizes that she does not love Ronnie. However, she does not think that she is reason enough to break off her engagement. Adela leaves Aziz, who goes into a cave to smoke. But when he ex exits, he finds their guide alone and asleep. As he searches for Adela, but only finds her broken filled glasses. Finally, he finds Fielding, who arrived at the cave in Miss Derek's care, but he does not know why Adela is. When the group returns to Chandrapur, Aziz is arrested for assaulting Adela. So mind changes, confusions, misunderstanding. Okay, these all are happen. All, all things happen in this novel. A passage to India. Okay, let's continue. Fielding speaks to the collector about the charge and claims that Adela is mad and Aziz must be innocent. The character feels that this is inevitable, for disaster always occurs when the English and Indians interact socially. Fielding requests that he see Adela, but McBride, the police superintendent, denies this request. Fielding acts as Aziz's advocate, explaining such things as why Aziz would have the field glasses. Aziz hires as his lawyer. Armit Rao, a Hindu who is notoriously anti-British, Gadbu leaves Chandrapur to start a high school in central India. The Anglo-Indians rally to Miss Quested's defense and call a meeting to discuss the trial. Filling attends and makes the mistake of actually referring to her by name. The collector advises all to behave cautiously. Then Ronnie enters. Fielding does not stand as a sign of respect. Mr. Tarton demands an apology. But Fielding merely resigns from the club and claims he will resign from this post if Aziz is found guilty. <coughs> Excuse me. Adela reminds in the McBride's bungalow. I mean, the last part is the trial part and the confusion, and the novel ends in the confusion. Adela remains in the McBride's bungalow, bungalow, where the men are too respectful and the women too sympathetic. She wishes to see Mrs. Moore, who kept away. Ronnie tells her that Fielding wrote her a letter to her, pleading Aziz's case. Adela admits to Ronnie that she has made a mistake and that Aziz is, in, Aziz is innocent. When Adela sees Mrs. Moore, she is 
morals and detest. She knows that Aziz is innocent and tells Adela that directly. Mrs. Moore wishes to leave India, and Ronnie agrees, for she is doing no one any good by remaining. Lady Mellonby, the wife of the Lieutenant Governor, secures Mrs. Moore quick passage out of India to Britain. During the trial, the Indians in the crowd jeer Adela for her appearance, and Mahmud Ali, one of Aziz's lawyers, claims that Mrs. Moore was sent away because she would clear Aziz's name. When McBride asks Adela whether Aziz followed her, she admits that she made a mistake. Major Calendar attempts to stop the proceedings on medical grounds, but Mr. Das, the judge, releases Aziz. After the trial, Adela leaves the courtroom alone as a riot as a riot summons for begins finding uh, fielding finds her and escorts her to the college where she will be safe. Disaster is averted only when Dr. Panna Lal, who was to testify for the prosecution, publicly apologizes to Aziz and secures the release of Nuruddin, the prisoner rumored to have been tortured by the English. At the college, Fielding asks Adela why she would make her charge, but she cannot give a definite answer. He suggests that she was either assaulted by the guide or had a hallucination. So that a confusion. Adela seems to believe that she that she had a hallucination, for she thinks she had a hallucination of a marriage proposal when there was none. Fielding warns her that Aziz is very bitter. Ronnie arrives and tells them that his mother died at sea. After a victory banquet for Aziz, he and Fielding discuss his future plans. Fielding implores Aziz not to use Adel for it will show him to be a gentleman. But Aziz claims that he is fully anti-British now. Fielding reminds Aziz what a momentous sacrifice Adela made. For now, she does not have the support for nor friendship of the other English officials. Fielding tells Aziz that Mrs. Moore is dead, but he does not believe him. The death of Mrs. Moore leads to suspicion that Ronnie had her killed for trying to defend Aziz. Although there was no wrongdoing in the situation, Ronnie nevertheless feels guilty for treating his mother so poorly. Adela decides to leave India and not marry Ronnie. Fielding point gains new respect for Adela for her humility and loyalty as he attempts to persuade Aziz not to take action against Adela. Adela leaves India and vows to visit Mrs. Moore's other children and Ronnie's step siblings, Estella and Ralph. So, Estella and Ralph are Moore's um, children and Ronnie's step brothers and sister. Aziz hears rumors and being, uh, begins to suspect that Fielding had an affair with Adela. He believes these rumors out of his cynicism concerning human nature. Because of this suspicion, the friendship between Aziz and Fielding begins to cool. Even after Fielding denies the affair to Aziz, Fielding himself leaves Chandrapur to, to travel while Aziz reminds Con convinced that Fielding will marry Adela Quested. Foster, assumes, uh, Foster resumes the novel sometime later in the town of Mao, where Godbol now works. Godbol currently takes part in a Hindu, Hindu birthing ceremony with Aziz, who now works in this region. Fielding visits Mao. He has married, and Aziz assumes that his bride is Miss Quested. Aziz stopped corresponding with Fielding when he received a letter which stated that Fielding married someone Aziz knows. 
However, he did not marry Adelaide, as it assumes, but rather Mrs. Moore's daughter, Stella. Fine fielding meets with Aziz and clears up this misunderstanding. Aziz remains angry, for he has assumed for such a long time that Fielding married his enemy. French events for cross culture or culture clash. Mm, that's towards the end of the novel. Nevertheless, Aziz goes to the guest house where Fielding stays and finds Ralph Moore there. His anger at Fielding cools when Ralph invokes the memory of Mrs. Moore and Aziz even takes Ralph boating on the river so that they can observe the local Hindu ceremonies. Their boat, however, crashes into one carrying Fielding and Stella. After this uh, comical event, this ill will between Aziz and Fielding fully dissipates. However, they realize that because of their different cultures, they cannot remain friends and part from the and part from one another cordially. Prayer facing a part on mosque set in India. So I have already discussed about the summary of the whole novel, divided in three parts: mosque, caves, and temples. So now I will discuss in brief the paraphrase of part one: mosque. Okay. Set in India several decades before the end of British rule, a passage to India by E.M. Forster explores that's the relationships that ensure when Dr. Aziz, an Indian doctor, is befriended by Mrs. Moore and Miss Adela Quested, two recently arrived English women. In the open opening scene, Dr. Aziz is involved in a discussion about whether or not it is possible for an Indian to be friends with an Englishman. The conversation is interrupted by a message from the civil surgeon, Major Calendar, who requests Dr. Aziz's immediate assistance. Aziz makes his way to Calendar's compound but arrives only to be told that the civil surgeon is out. On his way back home, Aziz stops in a mosque to rest and meets Mrs. Moore. He is delighted by her kind. behavior and accompanies her back to the Chandrapur club. Mrs. Moore's son, city magistrate Ronnie Hislop quickly learns of his mother's meeting with the Indian doctor. He instructs her not to mention the incident to his fiancée, Miss Quested, because he does not want her wondering whether the natives are treated properly and all that sort of nonsense. Meanwhile, Adela, who travel all the way from England to decide whether or not she will marry Ronnie, expresses a desire to see the real India. The character Mr. Tartan makes plans to throw a bridge party, a party to bring the full, the gulf or gap between East and the West, but the event is not a great success and, Ad and Adela thinks her countrymen map for inviting guests and not receiving them am amiably, one of the few officials who does make a genuine effort to make the party work is Mr. Fielding, the principal of the government college. He hosts a gathering of his own a couple of days later and it is then that Dr. Aziz first meets Adela and invites her and Mrs. Moore to visit the nearby Marabar caves. It is also on this afternoon that a friendship begins to develop between Aziz and Fielding. So there's the end of paraphrase of part one mosque. And in the next week we will learn part two. That is the caves of a passage to India. That's the end of the lesson of week five. Thank you very much for being with me throughout this lecture. For better understanding, was the video twice or thrice, or you can pause and play in between. Thank you. Bye bye.